for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Welcome back to our video series on Dreamweaver CS5 Quick Tips. In our last video, we talked about some of the shortcuts and some of the tools that Dreamweaver CS5 gives you to aid in developing your pages. We talked about the header section up here, and we also began to talk about the panels here. In this video, I want to begin to talk about the Properties panel down here at the bottom. Now, the Properties panel does exactly what you would expect it to do. It's going to show you the properties for whatever it is you select. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and highlight Page Banner, and since I had that selected, and I can do the same thing in the Code View, it's going to show me the properties for that particular item. Now the Properties panel actually has two different tabs inside of it. We have HTML there, and we also have CSS. And depending on which one I click on will depend on what set of tools I can apply. For example, if I'm in the HTML area, I can apply one of these other heading styles and make the change just like that. I could apply an ID style if I wanted to. I could see or apply a class style, as well as apply the strong and EM tags from directly from here, or create bulleted and or numbered lists, which would be unordered and ordered lists, as well as go ahead and add block quotes in with these indent and outdent tools. And obviously, I can set the links and the link targets, as well as the title for the link right here. Now, down here in this lower half of the Properties panel, you're going to see I have the Page Properties button. And that's really all, for the most part, right now, you're going to be using this bottom section for. So what some people do is they come over here and they point at this little icon right here. When you click on that, you're going to see that the bottom portion of my properties panel disappears. That gives me a little bit more space up here. And I can always click it and that bottom portion will reappear. So that's one option. If I click on CSS right over here, again all you're going to see is page properties so I don't lose very much just by collapsing that. Now on the CSS tag, again I can see what kind of item or what kind of uh, styles and what kind of fonts and different um, items have been applied to whatever text I have selected. So for an example right now, my H1 tag in my styles.css specifically calls out this green font color. And you can see in my panel that's also apparent. Now if I click here, and again, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have that highlighted. If I click here, I can change the color of that item. Now you're going to see that my, uh, you can see some of the colors, but not all of the colors right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way to work with this properties panel. And this is actually the way I prefer to work with it. Because I don't like all the space that it takes up over here. I kind of like how this becomes nice and compact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and point at the word properties here and I'm going to press and hold and drag up into this tool panel section. And you're going to see I get a blue underline underneath the existing tab group. When I release, that entire panel has now been collapsed into this button. And just like when I click on files, I get this. When I click on Properties, oh, that jumps out there. So now I've got this completely out of the way, but it's available anytime I want it. So I really like adding my properties over here. Now, again, we've got HTML, we've got CSS. And if I click this drop down, you're going to see it gives me a chance to create a new CSS rule directly from here, edit the existing rule, create maybe a new inline style, remove a class, or add a class. So there's quite a bit I can do from this menu. I can also make changes 
to the targeted rule over here and have them reflect back in the CSS style sheet. For example, right now my CSS style sheet calls out this is a green color again. So I can click this and I'm going to go ahead and make it a red color. So I made that change here. I click the properties to collapse that again. You're going to see an asterisk next to styles.css and that indicates that there's an unsaved change. And that was changing that font color to red. And there is my new font color. So making changes in the properties panel now can fall back into your CSS sheet. And that's a big improvement over earlier versions of um, Dreamweaver, where if you created a new rule or if you use the properties panel um, for, um, to make some changes, it would create either a new inline style or a new internal style, and it would ignore your um, your external style if the rules conflicted. If you're interested in learning more about that, um, we have a video on CSS rule inheritance. It's actually two videos that will get into um, the importance of where styles are located and um, how they inherit on one another. So that's my properties panel right there. And again, remember you can change things about the HTML. You can also change things about the CSS, including creating new rules, editing existing rules, lots of things you can do directly from this panel. And I'm just going to click on the word properties and that collapses in again. Now you also have a button up here for CSS styles. And that's also really a really handy shortcut. You can see when you highlight anything in your design view or in your code view, what exactly is going on with the CSS by looking at the CSS styles panel. For example, I'm going to go ahead and highlight page banner here and then click on CSS styles. Well, I know that that's got an H1 style on it, not from looking at all the rules, but by clicking here on current. And when I click on current, you're going to see that the rules that are being applied right now to this particular text are the H1. And I can make changes to that right down here. For example, I might want to change the font size. So I can click there, and maybe I want to make this 250%. I can change it to any one of the standard units of measurement also. And let's say I want to add a property. I can simply click here on Add a Property, click that drop down, and I get a listing of them. And I'm going to go ahead and select Border to, uh, border Top. And then I can come over here, and I can specify a value. I'm going to go ahead and do 1px, and then I'm going to type in a color code here, um, 000. I want it to be black. And I'm going to say I want it to be solid. So I do border top 1px solid, and I changed it to 250%. Um, I can't see the changes yet over here until I click, and then you'll see the changes. You can't even see that top border very well because I'm not in live view, I'm in design view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the live view option, and there is that top border on my H1 property. And again, I can highlight this here, whether it's in code view, design view, or live view, doesn't matter. Go to CSS styles, and whenever I select current, it's going to summarize the, proper, the CSS properties and the selector rules that are being applied and give you a chance to change any of these items that you want. And any changes that you do make here will again be reflected back in your CSS style sheet. If I click here and change the color back to that green, you'll see that my headings changed to green. And when I look at my style sheet, the color has changed back. So a lot of really useful tools in here. You should definitely explore these controls down here at the bottom as well. In our next video, we're going to look a little bit about the assets and panels area and how you can use those tools to speed up your coding and work in Dreamweaver. 
Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the uh, website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.